What's going on you guys? Thank you for joining me. I am at the uh, second shrine and it is at the uh, very edge. It's at the Florid Sandbar. Now the reason I'm going this way is because I'm going to make the uh, Kakariko Village, the last one I visit. So I believe I'm going to go from here to the this way and then just like kind of zigzag my way there. But we are at the Florid Sandbar. Now it's in the middle of a little island and if you you can try swimming across but you will need some stamina restoration dishes so what i would recommend doing is going past this bridge and there is a cliff right over here that you can paraglide right to the uh, right to it see right over there you can paraglide right to it and the reason i'm recording right here is so that way uh you guys can see how to get to the shrine because if you try and get uh if you try and go straight to it you step on the flowers and then this lady gets mad hey what are you doing you must not harm the flowers and then it resets you she sends you back to the very beginning <gasps> see so you have to make your way through there it's a shrine quest i'll just run through it because well actually no let me let me show you which way would be the easiest to go okay so from the entrance just follow this little trail like I am. You go around. And then these little guys will throw you off. So take them out as soon as you can. Whether with a bow or with a melee weapon. Oh, not a bomb arrow. So there you go. So you think, you know, it'd be hard and it's not. And now this is the tricky part, because if you try and run straight to it, as you can see, there is a, oh, there is a flower right there. So you kind of have to, I mean, you can crouch if you want to, that way it'll be easier. But we finally made our way to the shrine, it's the Gila Rao shrine. So let's make our way inside. Okay, so we're inside. It is titled Drifting, Drifting Gila Rao Shrine. And th this one's pretty simple. You just go onto the onto the raft and wait for your opportunity to jump. And there you go. Now this one, if you're quick enough, you can make it right as soon as it starts. Oh, see, and you can't climb on top. So if you fall, oh no, I'm going to drown too. Oh, well. Oh no, look, you can't climb, okay. So, yep. With a little bit of uh, good timing, you can uh, make it. And I believe you can use the magnesis to fix this stuff. Yep. yep. So you have an Opal. It's a 60 rupee uh, reward. Now right here, there are plenty of ways to actually do this. But I'm going to show you how I do it myself. Now, this will vary depending on if you have... Well, actually, you don't even need anything because all the runes are going to do the work for you. Now, if you want to get that chest, obviously, you're going to have to use the uh, the Cryonis. Pillar of Ice. Just make your way across. And then wait till it gets into a clear path to lift it up. And you get free five ice arrows. Now you can use the barrels if you want to to explode them, but the easiest thing is just using your uh, remote bomb and detonating it. As you can see, it's pretty simple. So yeah, that's how you do the uh, the drifting shrine.
Okay, so we just finished the uh, shrine. Let me zoom out so you guys can see once again. It is just north of activating the tower. Now, you don't have to go this route that I'm doing. I'm just simply going because um, it looks more of a sequential order, you know, like a little pattern. So, like once again, the floor at Sandbar. You go up this little cliff, you paraglide over, and that's how you get to it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. If this video helped you out or if you liked it, uh, consider subscribing or possibly leaving a like. All the support helps me out in the long run. But as always, thanks for watching and I will catch you guys next time.